Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Keep Productive, it is Francesco here. Today I'm very lucky to be passing over to Colin Eckert, who's actually going to dive into his uh, the way that he uses Obsidian, but also his brand new Things 3 inspired uh, Obsidian theme, which he has created. Uh, so Colin is a software engineer, um, and he's also an avid user of Things and Obsidian, and he's designed it, um, Obsidian, to look very much like Things. I'm really excited because today he's going to dive into how he uses Obsidian and more about the theme, which you can check out in the link in the description. This is a super insightful video. Uh, in particular, I liked how Colin approached his week reviews and also how uh, he uses roles um, to review how he's doing uh, in his sort of everyday life. And I really like that approach. I, I might take it myself. <laughs> um, and I think you'll definitely pick a, a few things uh, to take away to implement in your own routine. If you are interested in learning Obsidian, we've got a discount at the moment, so you can check it out in the link in the description. Thank you very much, Colin, and, and I think we're all eager to dive into how you use Obsidian. Hi, I'm Colin. I'm a software engineer and the creator of the Things theme for Obsidian. Obsidian is an amazing application. I use it every day to manage all of my work notes, research notes, um, book, article, podcast notes from Readwise, um, as well as my sort of daily and weekly reviews um, and I use it to manage all my projects and it's become pretty indispensable for me and in, in how I manage all the various aspects of my life and the things that I'm interested in. So I'm going to share a little bit about how I use it, some of the plugins I use and my workflows. Um, and if you find it interesting or hopefully you learn some things um, and, and you like me seeing you want to connect, you can always reach out and I'd be happy to, to share some, some thoughts and tips and all of that too. Um, a little bit about how I use Obsidian, I, I kind of view it as, uh, yes, a PKM tool, a second brain, um, but I also kind of view it as a, as a conversation partner in a really nerdy way. Um, it's some place I go and if I just want to like think on a topic deeply and converse with myself and the thoughts and notes I've taken in the past, uh, things that I've sort of summarized or, or bolded or uh, been just interested in researching and I come in here just to form connections, refine my thinking and use the, the things generated from those sessions to inform my work and, and some of the writing I do on the side. Uh, I've tried a lot of different apps, Notion, I've used Roam, um, still use Evernote a little bit. Um, but the reason I always come back to Obsidian and why I love using it so much is it's, it's simple, it's just, basically a layer that sits on top of a folder on your computer full of plain text markdown files. Um, so because of that, it's it's very future-proof. These are not stored in some cloud server um, on some proprietary server from some third-party company. They are yours, you own them, and you don't have to worry about that company shutting down and you losing all your notes. and. Um, and it's also very secure because of that. And I also opt in for Obsidian's syncing service, which is a paid service. So there's end-to-end -end encryption between all of my devices. Um, so I found that great. Also love that it's super extendable. There's lots of different plugins you can use, customizable with various themes. Um, and the community is amazing. Everyone in there is super generous and happy to help share tips if you get lost or just want to get some ideas on how you can better use Obsidian. So if you want to download it, just go to obsidian.md, open this up, and you can see here just a big button to download the version that you need. I'm on Mac, but you might be PC. Um, and once you do download it, you'll come back here and you'll see something like something like this up here. And you basically just be prompted to open a vault, which is just a folder. Um, if you have one already full of files that you want to use, or you can create a new one. Um, and Obsidian will open that and, and create new markdown files for you to start building your second brain and your PKM. Cool. All right, so like I said, it's super extendable. There's lots of different plugins you can use. Some of the ones I love are Sliding Panes, uh, which allows me just to open a bunch of different notes um, at, at once and kind of jump between them. So uh, let's see, I can do that. And if I 
want to slide between different notes, I can. I find this really helpful when I'm writing or working on something on, on book notes and, and comparing them to other notes. I find that really helpful just to have two things open at once and form connections and and quickly jump back and forth. Calendar plugin is great for daily notes and weekly reviews, data view, Kanban, checklist. I'll go into those with some of the workflow stuff. Um, but what I highly recommend is Hider by Capano. It just helps the app make uh, feel a little bit more native by stripping away some of like the title bar and ribbon. I, it's really awesome. And I use it in, in tandem with my theme just to make it feel super, super native. Um, so without it, it looks kind of like this with these ugly bars on the side. I like to get rid of that and just keep it super minimal um, and aesthetic. Cool. Uh, so like I said, you can also import your own themes um, or, or use one from the community. I created my own called the Things theme, which is the one I'm using here. I chose it because I love Things 3. I've been using it for years uh, as my task manager. Just from a UI UX perspective, it inspired me because it's, it's so clean and polished and the UX feels really intentional. Like everything in the app was designed around the GTD mindset. There's no fluff or extra features. It just feels very minimal. Um, this is what my things looks like. And you can see it's just a very minimal, clean aesthetic, which I tried um, to port over to Obsidian in this theme here. Um, you can download it if you go to open up your settings, go to appearance, and then under themes here, go to manage. You can see there's a, uh, here are the ones that I'm uh, installed already. I'm using the dev version of my theme, but there's a ton of other ones here that you can use um, to find your fancy. So they're always being built and added here uh, and, and for free, which is just amazing. Cool. And I'd be remiss, remiss if I didn't give credit to some of the themes that inspire me. Capano's minimal theme um, is like the gold standard and was my North Star as I was building mine. And, and a, a, uh, theme that I referenced heavily. Chitachi's yin yang theme was another great one that it really helped me understand how to build a native uh, theme and, and well and well designed and purposeful theme for Obsidian. Cool. Some of the workflows. Um, starting with the org structure, if you haven't noticed, I use Para, um, which is a organizational ethos um, championed and, and taught by Tiago Forte in Building a Second Brain. Basically, you're just organizing information on a spectrum of action ability. So on the left, you know, with projects being the most actionable you have areas um, that you're responsible for and have a, a, a standard level that you want to maintain, resources for topics you're interested in, and then all the way on the other end of action ability, the very end, are the archives. We're just completed projects and active items go in there. And that's kind of what I've used for here because it just makes sense for my brain. But I've done it in a kind of the obsidian way, which leverages um, the, the linking uh, that makes obsidian so unique as opposed to just the hierarchical folder structure of an app like Evernote. So usually what I'll do is uh, have projects, which are just notes, and then and like in this one here, this how I use Obsidian, this video that I'm recording is a project note. I will give it this project tag at the top. And then rather than um, uh, you know, link, link out to other various notes that I find important or um, in like my areas, for example, if I'm in my like, uh, finance area, I'll link out to a bunch of other um, topics, books, people, which is related financial concepts that are important um, out from this note and sort of treat this as my, my notebook that just links out to various notes um, and things that are relevant to this area. Um, and my programming one is another example. I'll link out to a bunch of various languages that I'm studying, frameworks, concepts. And then I also like to have in here like a tool sharpening list, which is just me personally keeping track of things that I've learn that I feel kind of shaky and I want to refine a little bit in terms of my understanding. And I'll add those here and just as a, as a reminder, hey, go back and visit that. Cool. So uh, jumping back to how I use 
So I already kind of went over some jumping off points. Um, like I said, Para is what I use to organize it. I, I do still have like a home note and kind of use um, Nick Milo's idea of maps of content to organize key areas as well. It's kind of a, a mesh of Para and, and maps of content. My home note here is one that just links out to all my areas and I'll link out to my projects um, here. And then I also have roles on my home note as well. And this is something that is, is new and I'm trying out, but I like the idea of being mindful about the various aspects and, and roles that I serve in my life. So I am a father. My daughter just turned one year, one year old. Um, her birthday was a project of, of its own. Also married. So I like to, um, you know, have that linked in here and as well as you know, brother, engineer, work, and a friend. And the way that I use this, if I go to my daily templates here, or not, sorry, my, my daily templates, if I go to my weekly review template, here in my weekly review, um, when I start a new one every Sunday and open it through the calendar plugin, I here have my roles. And once I'm done through the top section, which is really just like me logging what's working, uh, what worked this past week, what didn't work, and what's upcoming. I'll also take a second to just reflect on my roles. So I might say something, you know, about being a father. How, how did I do as a dad this past week? You know, and I might say something like, um, wore a silly costume at my daughter's first BA. And just like something just to keep in mind and reflect on how I'm doing in all these roles. Did I give my wife attention? Was I productive at work and on task? Um, and the benefit of that is if I go to, let's say like the father, I, I can sort of expand these and use the, the backlinks and link mentions of, of when I commented on how my performance as a, as a father and I can see sort of trends and, and just kind of reflect on how I've done in the past. So I find it useful just to be mindful of, of how I'm doing in various parts of my life and the responsibilities I have. So that's kind of my home note. And again, it links out to all of the other areas. Um, I have a projects board here, which really mostly I use this Kanban board here, which I like um, to manage all, all of my projects. And I'm very simple just to do doing done as the categories for the Kanban. And I have in here personal projects, work projects, um, articles I'm writing just all together, I find that just easiest to manage. And so I'll just manage the state of them and then link out to the various projects here. So like building a second brain, I'm taking it right now in cohort 13. And here are all like all the, the other notes about this project that I've linked back to and sort of, again, using this project note as sort of a, a, a notebook and linking out to all of the various notes, or I guess linking back to it from all the various notes I've taken on this project. So that's how I use the Kanban plugin and, and manage all of my projects. And then I also have a couple inboxes. So on the left-hand side, I have this just inbox folder, which is my default place for all of my new notes. And I'll go in there every so often and just synthesize these, move them to where they need to go. Um, and, and maybe do some progressive summarization on the, on the notes there. And I also have my, what's called my reading inbox, which basically takes all of the notes that are ported from Weedwise, which is a integration tool that will pull all of your notes from apps like Instapaper, uh, Pocket, Kindle app, book notes, Air podcast notes, um, and sort of integrate and push them to my Obsidian. And so I'll kind of collect all of the new ones here in my reading inbox so I can go through them and sort of take one more layer of progressive summarization and highlights or bolds, really key takeaways in that. So I've been reading a ton and I did a recent big port. So a lot of new book notes are in here, um, but I'll open these up and go through them here and we'll tag them with various topic areas like here i might do something like um 
you know, start startups or business, you know, entrepreneurship, and then bullet some of the other parts, or link out to other more evergreen notes in here as I'm reading through this and sort of synthesizing uh, this this book notes. And I might do that all in a couple of passes, maybe just do bulleting at first and then come back to it later. But this is sort of how I manage my my uh, readwise notes. And under the hood, all this is, is just some simple data view queries. So basically just pulling a list from um, uh, this, let's see, takes basically just my whole database looking from the notes that are tagged with both inbox and articles, and then just source them by the size descending. And I do that for podcast and tweets too. So that's how I process um, my Readwise notes, super simple. It's kind of getting unwieldy now, so I might think of a better way to do it, but right now it's working. Sweet. All right. So other than that, um, I'll show you my daily template, which is, again, very simple. This is something I'll do every day. I basically just tag, have some sort of highlight for the day, my main objective, and I'll tag it with to do so I can use the checklist plugin I have over here. And we just sort of capture the highlights and make sure I'm, I'm completing all those. So I'll write something I'm gra grateful for. And then just a log here, just a space for just capturing all random notes throughout the day as, uh, as I'm working professionally um, or, or personally. And something I do like to do is if I'm taking notes and I will like learn something like use get move to save um, history, I might, you know, add this note here and tag it with today I learned. And this is another tag that I'll use just to um, be able to go back here and search later for this tag and I can come back here and get ideas for blog articles on things that I've learned or things that I want to research more. And that's just a simple way I use the daily notes and my log just to keep the idea generation coming for for projects or, or articles. All right, so that's how I use the daily note and that's mostly how I use Obsidian. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of other things uh, that I use for studying concepts, studying programming frameworks like React, taking a bunch of notes here and then highlighting or linking out to other things um, that are related or used in tandem. This is basically my, my repository for all of my, my research notes and how I learn new skills as, as a developer and stay, um, stay curious and motivated to, to learn. So it's an amazing app. I, I highly recommend it. If you like this theme that I'm using, Things theme, again, you can find it in the community themes or, um, or you can go to the repo on GitHub and, and feel free to connect. Happy to answer any questions you have. If you have any issues with the theme, let me know. Open up an issue on GitHub and I'm happy, happy to, to take, a, take a look. Um, but the best place to find me is either Twitter, um, at Colin Eckert, or GitHub, or you can go to Colin, colineckert.net and find me there. Cool. Well, thanks so much. Have fun. Um, talk to you soon.